Hoe are the Nephilims part 26 on Professor Anders Redlinghuis of the First Assembly of Yafashua in South Africa, Montana, Pretoria. Should you be interested in any of the books which I've written, or even the restoration of the original sacred name Bible, the Rotten Arm Version, which is not available in any bookshops in the world, which I have a couple of copies. You can surely contact my wife, Pastor Rika, 0722. 367124 that's on plus 27 our international code or you can go to my website https double point hyphen yafa y a h v a h point c o point z a if this is the first time that you are going to participate in the study i urge you to go to part one because you surely missed a lot of information also please subscribe to the channel so that you can be informed of any of the other studies that we are currently busy with. Very important to know, this announcement I'm only going to make on Mondays, uh, is very important that we only associate ourselves ourself with the following people, any Messianic groups, the Israel Vision groups, the Hebrew Roots movement, we are not part of the Yah movement or any other Jehovah Witness movement or the Seven Day Adventist movement. We're not part of any church denomination, affiliation, or organization in the world. We are only an end time Bible study group, and this is what we do. We study the word of Yahfa all over the world. We're mainly using the ancient Hebrew sacred name Bible, according to the 1816 restoration of the original sacred name Bible. The Rottenham version, which was translated by Dr. Joseph Briand Rottenham in 1860. It was one of the oldest English Hebrew Bibles that you will put your hands that you will find. We're also using the 1611 King James Bible. So if you don't have a restoration Bible, you might you can use your 1611 King James Bible. Uh, just an announcement, this is not this uh, restoration of the original sacred name Bible is not the 1902 Emphasis Corrupted Bible. It's called the Emphasis 1902 Bible. It's corrupted. It's not the same one. According to the ancient Hebrew scriptures, the name Jesus was originally called Yafashua. The name God was originally called Elohim or Hashim. The name of the Lord was originally called Yafa. The name of the Holy Spirit was originally called the Ruach HaKodesh. We refer to ourselves as Yafist. According to 1 Peter 4 verse 16 in the restoration of the original sacred name Bible, and so was the disciples of Yahshua and his followers 2,000 years ago. I trust that this study will be a blessing unto you in the name of Yahshua. All right, that's the announcements. I'm not going to do any of these type of announcements in the rest of the week. Welcome to Breakfast with Profanus. I trust that this is going to be a blessing unto you. We're going to continue where we left off. Genesis 4 verse 8. Now the reason which I said uh, a week or two ago, why we are doing Genesis from Genesis 1 to Genesis 6, is for one reason, is to, so that you can, we can have the sequence and the following, the setup of how everything was worked, so that we can find who are the sons of God that created daughters with, uh, or created the Nephilims with the daughters of men in Genesis 6. Genesis 4, 8. And Canaan talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother, Abel his brother, and slew him. And Jaffa said unto Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And he says, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? You know, this is one of the two kingly New Testament commandments. The only two kingly New Testament commandments. Here Israel, Yahweh your Elohim is one. Serve Him with your heart and your might and everything that's in you. The second one, you must love your brother like yourself. With other words, you must be your brother's keeper. What does Cain ask Yahweh? Am I my brother's keeper? Yeah. When you are born again out of water and out of the Ruach HaKodesh, according to the New Testament, through the blood, the resurrection power of Yahshua, I am my brother's keeper. Verse 10, and he, this, 
Yafa say, thou, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brothers called, uh, bloods called uh, unto me from the ground. Now look in your Bible to that unto me. What do you see funny here? The me. Is Yafa speaking? How in the world can you write in the 1611 King James Bible, me with a small letter? If it's Yafa, the creator of heaven and earth talking. You see what I'm talking about? Unto me. You can make that a capital M in your Bible. Something is wrong, we'll make it right. Genesis 4.11 And now art thou cursed for the earth which had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. So the earth is now also cursed for Canaan's sake, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not bend forth, yield unto thee their strength. Figurative and bondage thou shalt be on the earth. With other words, you will have a very hard time working the ground. And Canaan said unto Jaffa, My punishment is great, greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out of this, out of this day. She behold thou, behold thou, that thou should be a, a capital T, isn't it? He's addressing Yaffa. Behold thou has driven me out of this day from the face of the earth and from this and from thou face. Thou shalt be a capital T. Shall I be heat and I shall be a figurative and a bon bonch on the earth shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. So, what does uh, uh, Cain says? Everyone that's going to find him shall slay him. Now listen here. And Yaffa said unto him, Therefore whoever slayeth Cain, and vengeance shall take on him sevenfold. Yaffa set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him lest any finding him should kill him. He set a sign. Unfortunately, uh, throughout the Bible, we don't find the sign that Yaffa has given it. I know a lot of the far-right people says that the, the children that was born from Canaan uh, or, or Canaan was black and these two or three signs one sign was that he was black the other one is his flat nose the other one is his curly hair it's not so it's not scriptural that is your israel vision people they will tell you straight out this is what it is and there's not a scripture that confirms it nobody can say what it is oh some people says that he will have a smell he will identify him by his smell he smells like something that's half dead. No, you can't say it. Because it's not scriptural. There's a lot of things we can say. Other people say where black people walk in the field, nothing grows again. It's not a scripture that, that confirms it. To say that. And that's a sign. It's not a sign. It was a sign. While I'm, the question that's more important to me than the sign. Is who are they? He says that they will kill him. He says here, and listen to what he says in verse 40. Behold, thou hast driven me out of the day from the face of the earth, and from the face shall I be hid, and I shall be fixed and bondage in the earth all the day. And everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Now who's the everyone? According to the churches, two people, Adam and Eve, left the Garden of Eden. They had two sons, Cain and Abel, four people. Am I right? Cain slays Abel. How many people is left? Cain slays Abel. How many people is left? Three. Adam, Eve and Cain. Now Yaffa says to, to uh, Yaffa now driver drives Cain away. Away from Adam and Eve. And he says, now what does Canaan say? Everybody that is going to find me. Now who's there everybody? Is it Adam or Eve? Or Adam and Eve? 
Who say everybody? You see, this is where the Genesis 1, 23 to verse 26. People that was spoken. That didn't have the everlasting eternal soul. They were dead. They had life in them, but they didn't have everlasting life in them. These are the people that Cain fears will slay him. That's the only, only people that you will find. Because for many years we were taught in the churches that the Genesis 1 creation and Genesis 2 creation is the same creation. Just spoke of different times. Well, if you want to confer, convince me about it, just tell me where is Cain going to? He's going to the land not in the east. Now who's living in the land not on the east? It's not Adam and Eve. Well, Adam and Eve Adam and Eve, because it's his mother and father, they with him. Because Yaffa is now driving him away, Cain. And he fears that the other people will slay him. Who's that? That's the Genesis 1 people. That's where your Nephilims is going to come from. Your, not your Nephilims, let's call them Nephilims for study purposes. But that's where the giants will come from as we carry on. You see how the scripture is taking a certain uh, direction now? Why? Because we start to understand the scripture. The things the church has never told us anything about. And it's not my theology. I'm reading from the 1611 King James Bible. I'm reading from the 1611 King James Bible so you can understand your own Bible. I'm Afrikaans speaking, but I can understand what is written here. You, sh you are English speaking. You should be understand it more better than I do. Because it's your first language, is my second language. So he fears that whoever will find him will kill him. And it's not Adam and Eve. So who is it? The question mark is, who is it? Who would you say now is it? Would you agree with me? That is a Genesis 1, 23, 26 people uh, that the scripture talks about. Uh, Genesis uh, 1, 26 to 29. I just got the verses wrong. Will you agree with me now? That's the only other people that stay. Because they are the people that Jaffa says, you will multiply and fill the earth. Now the land not was part of the earth where Jaffa actually sent Canaan to. Verse 15, And Jaffa said unto him, that's Cain, Therefore whoever slayeth Cain, who are they? There's only Adam and Eve according to the church theology. Vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And Jaffa set a mark upon Cain. We don't know what the mark is. Nobody can show me what the mark is. There's not a scripture. Lest any find him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of Jaffa and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. The east of Eden. The land Nod. Where does the land Nod come from? Oh, we will find uh, uh, in the next scripture that something very funny is going to happen. And then I'm going to give you the answer a lot of pastors in my life has answered me. Because I, it's for many, many years, for the last 30, 35, 40 years, that I've been preaching this scriptures. Since I was a young pastor and I was made out to be half, half stupid, half mad. Genesis 4 verse 17, and Cain knew his wife. He did what? Cain knew his wife. Well, that's a, what does the word knew means? He had intercourse with his wife. And she conceived and bare Enoch. Now tell me, just you don't agree with me, to knew his wife is to have intercourse. Tell me, let's just go back to Cain and Abel when the Bible says, and Adam knew Eve and Cain was born. And then Abel was born. When did he knew Eve so that Abel could be born? He says, and Adam was born and Cain was born. 
after after Adam uh, after Cain uh, uh, his brother so what happens here they were twins now you can understand more than ever that they were because yes it's Cain and Cain knew his wife why is it important for Yahweh to to bring it to our attention so that we can understand what happened in the Garden of Eden where the serpent planted seed and where Adam planted seed it didn't happen outside the Garden of Eden it was the sin that was committed inside the Garden of Eden they had sex nothing else the, apple, the serpent never gave an apple never they had sex in the that was it. When the Bible says after they went out of the garden that Adam knew Eve, it refers to then when they were in the garden. This refers to because the seed, both seeds, were already planted. Till tomorrow morning, if Yafas will, Maranatha, Yafashua is coming back again. Hallelujah.